8 or 24. Number 8. 24 was more challenging. It's not Monday, but it still means three things. Cause today's Wednesday, and one, you're not my WCW. Two, it's Kobe Day, and three, it's time for the 824 podcast. How are you guys doing? I'm your host, the product of Poverty's Environment, the Pope Chuck Paul. Two years in, two years deep, 824 podcast still here. Some of you motherfuckers still sleep, man. Hope you guys enjoyed your week. Hope you guys are enjoying your week. Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. You know, I was going to drop an episode on Monday, and I said, yo, why not just drop it a little week, Kobe Day, 824. What better day? I've been doing this podcast for two years now, and pretty much just a lot of my rants, what I think about certain situations, pop culture, sports, all my commentary on TV, and what so be it. Now... I haven't got canceled by anybody because I never really fully speak my mind and take it there, you know. But I think I might do that for this upcoming third season. A friend of mine, he told me, he said, yo, I don't watch you to be nice and politically correct. I watch you to be you. And I, I could tell when you're holding back. So I'm, I'm going I'm to stop holding back, you know what I'm saying, for some of my day one homies. And shout out to motherfuckers who watch me on a regular basis. You know, I need those views up. You got to... Like, subscribe, share, and comment. Engage in the comment section. Um, hell, even take some clips, repost them if you want. Hell, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I win, you win. Um, yesterday was Kobe's birthday, A23. I believe he would have been 44. His wife, Vanessa Bryant, is going to court right now over the the leaked photos of his body and the other dead passengers that was on the helicopter and her lawyer is saying she's seeking 42 million people saying oh that's too much money but I'm just assuming she's going she's sharing that money with the rest of the the passengers families who, who passed away and whatnot because they also sued the helicopter company together but yeah that's going on with that And what I want to talk about also, what I got going on with the whole channel, I will have some interviews up soon. I've been procrastinating. I've just been falling back, watching a few things this year, seeing how things are going as far as what everybody else is doing as far as the interview space, stuff like that. And you're looking at different ways I can broaden the channel. So yes, I will be having some more TKO interviews coming up soon. I do want to branch out, get a couple new shows out there. I have some ideas, just me finding the right person to host them. That's a different story. So I'm still looking on, still looking and working, working on that. I'm gonna have some new merch dropping real soon, real soon. Open the open the shop back up. You know, upload all the the products back to Instagram and Facebook. So if you're on your phones, get on Instagram, TKOMG shop, TKOMG. D-O-T-N-E-T for the updates on different um, interviews and posts and stuff like that. I normally post a lot of things that's on the website in the stories. Now, let's get on with this shit. So I watched this documentary on Netflix called I Killed My Dad. Crazy ass shit. Pretty much this teenager shot his dad and killed him. Why he did it? He said they got into a fight. 
and whatnot because his dad had uh, separated from his current wife, his ex-wife, not his mother. And he thought that he was having conversations with her over the phone. He, he was like, well, why are you talking to her? This at the fourth, took his phone. Then got into a fight. He was 17 at the time. He went inside of his father's room, locked himself in there. Then he said he got a gun, then got a backup gun in case one of them didn't work. Opened the door up, shot his dad twice, then shot his dad in the head. And then he called the police and said, hey, I killed my dad. Long story short, he only did six months and got four years probation. Here is why. They're trying to say that he was abused even though there was no record of no abuse whatsoever. I'm not saying he wasn't. Also, his father never enrolled him in any school. Cameras all in the house. Because allegedly, he kidnapped his son from, the, from his actual mother when he was about five years old. And his mother said that she had filed a missing, persons, a missing persons report. Now the son was homeschooled since, ever since then, never been on social media or nothing like that. Now the son never changed, his, never got his name changed, but neither had the, had the father. So why couldn't the mother find the father? And that brings me to episode 87, motherless child. Back to the story. Why didn't she search for the dad at least? Because he kept his name, had a legal job. You could have searched for him. It's not like this was in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Though this is in the late 2000s. Like 2000, this is recent because the dude just turned 18 years old. So they were trying to say that he was abused by his, by his father and that he just, he, and that he had, he, his only option was to kill him. And this, this will fuck my head up, because my thing is just this. Devil's advocate. If he was me, if I was him, I'd still be in jail. I'd be in jail for life. I think that um, he was char charged first with manslaughter, then um, second degree murder. Like, I, you know he couldn't afford this lawyer. Like, I'm like, how did he get this lawyer to get him off scot-free? You know? And it's crazy how they like those, those like piecing things together because like the dude, after he got locked up, people that he worked with was like, yo, look into his background, like who was his mother, this and the fourth. That's when they found the mother, and the mother found out that he was still alive after he found out that after she found out that found out that she had killed her ex-husband and whatnot, and the ex-wife who they were arguing about, she ended up leaving him after her actual son left the house because he said he couldn't take the abuse or whatever. Now here's my thing. Like, if your son left, why didn't she leave? Why didn't she call the authorities about the abuse on her stepson? And again, I'm gonna bring it back to the mother. Cause when you see, see this doc, and you, and, you see, and you see his mother, you're like, yo, she look like she's on something. Maybe he, he, he took her for a reason. I'm not saying the abuse was, was okay, but she looked like she was on some shit. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, if that dude was me, I'd be in jail right now. So my thing is this. They said, why didn't you break a window and climb out the window? Why don't you call the police first? He said, well, I thought I would just shoot him, you know, and you know, he wouldn't die. And I'll just call the police and tell them what happened. And they come and take me. What? And when you watch, you do notice that the kid is kind of off. Like he's never, he doesn't be around a lot of people like that. But the logic. You shot him twice. Then you go for the kill and shoot him in the head. You could have shot him twice. Now for the kill, and then call the police. Then they all come and get you, or whatever. Right? But also premeditated, because you went and got one gun while you were locked in the room, away from him, 
and then you got a second one and said you got it as a backup in case the first one didn't work because you never shot the other one before. So that would mean that you shot guns before. I'm like, look, man, just check this doc out. It's fucking crazy. I'm still like, wow, all he got was four years probation. Interesting, interesting. What we got on the docket? Oh, woke up today. Irv Gotti still talking about Ashanti. Oh my God, he's getting into detail how they were working late in the studio. Get her ass was looking good in those baby fat sweats. They were vibing, they were singing and whatnot together. And he was like, yo, you want me to take, take you home? She was like, I bet. He said, yo, I'll, I'll go up to her doorstep. And I just grab her ass and I just kiss her. And she was just like, yo, what took you so long? I'm like, yo, this dude really, really, really loved her, man. It's crazy, though. Because, I mean, I, I, it's hard to figure if, he, if it's coming from a place of hate because he's mad that she left Murder, Ing. She wants her masters. She wanted her masters back. He's be recording her albums to receive 100% of the royalties. Or is this just a man who's like, really, like, damn, I had something good. Although nobody was supposed to know about it. <laughs> and now he wants everyone to know about it. Like I said, suck a behavior, man. Like, look, you can't uncorny some motherfuckers, yo. I mean, he comes off like one of those dudes who wasn't like getting all the bitches before money. But what do I know, man? Like, I ain't rich and just like me for me. Ah. But yeah, that's crazy. And you got you to gotta think like, damn, yo, um, I wonder what Ashanti think about this, think about all this. You know she getting tagged in it. She getting phone calls. She's probably like, I should have never gave this motherfucker some pussy. Never. See, this, this is why a lot of the quote unquote squares don't be getting bad chicks. Because of stuff like this. They get money, then they, then they, they don't know how to act. They, get, they start being chatty patties, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, all, all this man tea. Like, it's supposed to be about the, about the Murder, Inc. documentary, not about you and Ashanti's late night hookups. You know what I'm saying? Talk about how y'all was up in the studio making certain songs and whatnot. You know? Going on tour. The a &R process, like... What was it like when y'all made this hit? What was it like um, doing the Hard Knock Life tour? Jay and Ja Rule. Like, you understand? Like, 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 talk about that. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Also, some people are upset because um, Kanye West requested that his Yeezy Gap hoodies are put in these massive bags. They look like giant IKEA bags. Like, huge, like, I won't say trash bags, they're not trash bags, but the big Ike Ikea bags. He wants all the hoodies in there. Doesn't want the staff to help people, help people get the size they want. Not folded, just all thrown in there. And people are upset. And here is my thing. How does this ruin your day? How? Don't go to the Gap and buy the hoodies then. Buy them online. Plain and simple. Were you planning on buying a hoodie? Yes? Buy it online then. Fuck it. If you weren't planning on buying a hoodie, how did this affect you? Like I always say, man, I don't complain about the things I can change and I don't complain about the things I can't change. Meaning, yo, what are you complaining about? I mean, I read one report that said he wanted people to, to, to feel the way homeless people feel when they're digging through trash and whatnot. I heard one rumor that he used to work that gap and he got fired because they thought he stole something. So this is his way of sticking it to the man. Whatever. It's all weird to me. It's all weird behavior to me. Like, look, I don't care, man. Like, I get my hoodies from like PacSun, Mitchell and S and Urban Outfitters and whatever like 
boutique, whatever, cool brand and got some, got some fly shit I want to rock. Or I just print my own shit, you know what I'm saying? So, whatever, dog. <laughs> Ooh, also, um, it's been a few weeks now that Brittany Griner has been sentenced to nine years in a Russian jail for illegally smuggling THC products into Russia. NBA, former NBA champion and NBA Hall of Famer, Dennis the Worm Rodman has said he's going to Russia to try to get her back. And if it's one man who might be able to do it, the same man who was partying in North Korea with King Kim Jong-un, I think, I believe his name is, it could be him. But Rodman, be careful. They might take your ass too. Pause. Look, man, you never know. You never know what Robin might be able to accomplish. And like I said before, like a lot of these, um, like the, the folks are still holding the whole Pledge of Allegiance thing over Brittany Griner's head. Y'all better hope she come home because if she don't come home, that Marine don't come home either. And we know y'all love y'all, y'all patriots. So, yeah, man. Easy. And also, I also feel like if they do bring Brittany Griner home, they got to let a lot of people who's locked up for, for marijuana out of jail. Like, all of them. All of them. Expunge their records, too. Because if you're saying it's only weed over there, then yeah, it's only weed over here, too. And make it legal on the federal level as well. So all these cities and states can open up Marijuana dispensary because I'm spinning. Look, let me tell you. I had some of that Gary Payton strain this weekend. Man, look. Yeah. It's that word. I ought to, I ought to try some of that, that Tyson, Mike Tyson strain too, um, brand. So we got some shit called Galactic Toad. Oof. Got to try that. Oh, and I caught Raisin Cane in, um, this Sunday. Man, let me tell you something. Rock is probably the worst mother in television history. Got a son selling, selling and cooking crack. Got him pulling hits on, on detectives who are secretly his, his father. So pretty much Officer Howard was faking that he doesn't know who shot him. So like, you know, the officers and whatnot in the precinct. Cause he know Cannon is his son and whatnot. But he told Rock, like, yo, your son can't shoot for shit. It's not in him. I was like, ooh. But Howard, he one step ahead. He's going to take her down a different way, I believe. So, um, Scrap, the dude who got the eye taken out and whatnot in season one, who also got into a fight with Kanan. He got arrested for gambling and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? And Howard was like, yo, um, I seen your boy talking to police in the precinct. Yeah, um, he's snitching. He put that in Rock's ear, not knowing he was arrested for gambling and whatnot. And his mom was in there too. She, he knows the kind of person Rock is. So Rock goes to Marvin and Lulu like, yo, scrap snitching, we gotta take him out. Lulu and Marvin is like, nah, that dude lost a nine for us, he did this and that for us, like, nah, that's not him. So Marvin went to approach him about it. He was like, yo, I was at my cousin's at Corona, named Ebony, I, I was hoping to put up paintings. So Marvin goes to Corona ask her a few questions. She's like, wasn't nobody over here hanging up no pains, da, da, da. But at the end of the day, who knows? Maybe she don't know Marvin. That's why she ain't gonna tell him everything. She don't know this dude. She know her cousin get busy in the street. But still, Marvin was like, yo, I don't think so. I ain't saying nothing. Lula was like, yo, I'm not with it. And I'm not going to bat, meaning he's not gonna pop her. Not gonna pop her. So what they do, they tell Scrap, we got, a, we got a whole building for you to take over and whatnot. Marvin and Lulu drive him there, whatever. They bring him into like a little abandoned room or whatever. He's like, oh, this shit gonna be dope, it's gonna be dope. Out of nowhere, you see Rock. They put the gun to the side of his head. He's like, no, 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 bang. And you see, now when Scrap come up missing, 
Detective Howard gonna know what happened. He gonna know Rock had something to do with it. You know what I'm saying? He gonna have that on her. He gonna take her down. And if we already have I'm coming up in the next episode. You see Kanan in the car. He about to tell Kanan like, yo, I'm your pops. So we gonna see. It's gonna get real nasty. Get real nasty. And Unique is out of jail. Worrell is with um, Rock and them crew. He did some sucker shit. Like now he, he's hustling for um, for Rock. And what he should this, this is just me being a real one. You know what I'm saying? If my homie know I'm hustling for the ops right now, and he's fucked up, I'm telling him like, 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 like this. Like, look, check this out. I gotta eat right now. But what we gonna do is me, I'm gonna stay with them, find out the inside workings and whatnot, and then we gonna hit them hard. Of course. Because I couldn't leave my homie high and dry like that. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to see what Unique going to do. You know what I'm saying? Because he look a little desperate right about now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would think he would have had some kind of money somewhere stashed. But, but it looked like they ransacked his tailor shop, which was also like his, uh, I don't want to say the word hideout. But yeah, his hideout, like, like you know what I'm saying? His, his place of business. You feel me? So, yeah. Rock is a terrible mother. Oh, my God. I remember one time my mom did something that I didn't like, God bless her soul. I put on that um, Sunset Park soundtrack and played Motherless Child so long, so loud. As soon as that first bar kicked up my door, like, turn that off. I was like, oh, guess she knew what I meant. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, dog, oh, man. But yeah, two years I've been doing this podcast. And honestly, I'm going to take it to another level. Some of you might not going to be liking what I be talking about or my opinion on things. But guess what? F it, man. F it. Hate it or love it or keep scrolling. And also, it's in the birthday shout out to my brother. He would have been 46 this Friday. God bless his soul. And before I let go, the shop is back open. TKOMG.net backslash shop. Instagram, TKOMG shop. Like I always say, like, share, subscribe, comment. God is good. God is great. Thank God my paper straight. I am the Pope Chuck Paul. Peace out. Two years in, baby.